wonderful day given to us by our gracious, merciful Father. And I pray that all of us will take advantage of this day to walk closer with God, to relate properly with God, that God himself will glorify our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we are going to read Psalm 85, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 85, 8 and 9. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. I want to hear what God will speak. Are you a child of God? He will speak peace. Are you a saint of God? He will speak peace. God speaks to all manner of people. But is it peace for everybody? No. You know what the scripture says? Say unto the righteous, they shall be well with them. But unto the fellow who refuses righteousness, say it cannot be well with such a person. That's the scripture. So when it says he will speak peace, it specifies to his own sins. Are you a saint of God? Does God see you as a saint? Or you are a saint according to some imagination of your head? You are sent according to some theory that you and your ilk have come up with. I know when you claim to be in Christ, he takes over. You are sent. You are righteousness. It does not matter what you do. He gives you righteousness. Is that a sent of God? Is that according to the true word of God? According to the proper application of the scripture? Or some surface thing that encourages you to live according to the devil and claim that God is making you a saint? If indeed you are a saint of God, today is a day of peace for you. But it says, don't turn back into the other path. That's what I am saying. If you claim to be of God, live like God. If you claim to be in the grace of God, live in the grace of God. He said, the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them to live righteously in this world. Are you living righteously in this world? Or you are just living anyhow and telling yourself it's righteously because... Christ has imputed righteousness unto you. Wonderful. So if I kill, because Christ has imputed righteousness unto me, my own is not murder. The other fellow on whom Christ has not imputed righteousness, he kills, that one is murder. Are you crazy? Murder is murder. Killing is killing. Adultery is adultery. Lying is lying. Whoever does it is guilty. He said, don't go back into that life. You are a saint of God, leap unto God. Don't go on a straight line of sin and you turn away into the crooked path of righteousness. But you now tell yourself the path is too crooked. He said, the way is narrow. That's what Jesus said. And few they are that find it. Now we are talking about an express way into heaven. I don't know who came up with it. Because if Christ is the only way to heaven and he says his own path is narrow and your own, you are talking about an expressway, you have to have a new Christ. Or for you, it's not the only way to heaven. There must be another track you are following. Christ's own, it's narrow path, winding path, difficult to traverse because there are all manner of things on the way. But the satisfaction is that there is the Holy Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they cannot fail. They are the children of God. Those are the ones to which I am speaking peace today according to the word of God. Is that I'll listen to what God, the Lord, will say before he will speak peace to his saints. But don't return to the other side so that that peace will continue. Verse 9 says, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. How do you fear God? By shaking? No, by obeying him. Whoever fears the Lord obeys his commandment. That person is the friend of Jesus. Jesus said, if you obey my commandments, you are my friends. And that's the person he's going to glorify. He said that glory may dwell in our land. How will the glory of God be seen in our lands? By us. When you live unto God, when you fear him, when you obey him, when you keep his commandments, he brings his glory upon you. If it was a community of a million people and only a hundred 
were able to lead, that the glory of God comes upon the hundred, the place is transformed. You don't need a million people to transform a society of 10 million. You need far, far, far less than that. So what if the million people existed and did things like that, or even 5 million, or any number higher than that? But if it were you only be that single person, there was only a lot in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was the only one that was set free. Wherever you come from, whoever you are, be that person. You know the wonderful thing, the book of Ephesians, the very first verse. To the sense in Ephesus, Ephesus was the center of immorality. The center of all manner of worldly philosophy the center of learning adverse and against God, the center of everything that you call evil in those days. But there were saints in that land. Can you be that saint? If you are, that peace is for you today. If you endeavor to be it, even if you were not, this peace I am talking about is your portion today. But do not turn back to the other part. And God will uphold you. The Spirit of God will go with you and the glory of God will come upon you and distinguish you from everybody else and keep a path of glory for you continually unto the end. The Holy Spirit never gives up on anybody. Jesus has never given up on anybody. But we give up on him because we turn away to folly. Don't turn back. Continue and he will uphold you gloriously unto the end in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.